The latest film from production company A24 is a retelling of the Arthurian legend Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. Well, does it live up to that legend or does it deserve to be off with its head? Hey movie fans, so I just got back from seeing The Green Knight, which is basically a retelling of the Arthurian legend of Sir Gawain, not Gawain, Gawain versus The Green Knight, which is essentially on Christmas Day, The Green Knight shows up in front of King Arthur and his round table and says, if any man is brave enough to hit me with a single blow, he can have my axe, but in one year's time, that man must come seek me out, and I will repay whatever strike he put against me. So, a young up-and-coming knight, not even knight yet, Gawain, goes and meets the challenge. He's like, yes, I will do this. I will finally have a story to tell about my honor and my bravery against an unknown foe. The knight offers himself up. And Gawain chops off his head. This isn't a spoiler. This is just the very beginning of the movie that sets everything into motion. Gawain chops off his head. The knight, unfazed by this, picks up his head and says, One year hence, and basically runs off. So now Gawain has to face this being in one year's time, basically to maintain his honor. But he has the giant's axe. Thus is our story that I am still trying to come to grips with even while I'm doing this review right now because there's a lot of things about this that I really really like I think the problem I run into though is I went into this movie potentially with too high of expectations because I had seen a lot of really positive reviews and everyone's talking like wow movie of the year this is amazing this is incredible and I would agree that some parts of this are other parts at least for me personally didn't really work and felt very very plotting and slow but let's get into some positives every single performance in this movie is fantastic this is a perfect vehicle for actor dev patel who absolutely crushes it in the role of gawain he is fantastic this movie basically rests on his shoulders and for a leading man he actually doesn't have as much dialogue as you would think primarily because he's alone for a good portion of this as he's just one man out doing a single quest which if your idea of a knight's quest is more swashbuckling big scale adventure you need to temper your expectations because this is much more low scale and reserved there are no really big action set pieces this is an a24 version of an epic that being said it is epic in scale for how it presents its narrative in terms of holy crap this is a big deep philosophical you know what to expect from a24 but it's also massive in terms of its scale from a production standpoint. Like, this feels like you've been transported to the time of King Arthur. Everything very much just... It's very hard to describe it. It's very tactile. You can feel the textures in this movie more so than almost any other movie I've seen recently. You, you feel the cold, harsh bite of winter in this movie. You feel the, the growing isolation and tiredness of Dev Patel's Gawain. It feels... It's epic in scope to the scale that I've not seen in an A24 movie up until this point. Other great performances, Alicia Vikander is fantastic in her, without delving too much into spoilers, multiple roles. She has quite a bit that she has to bring to the table. I really also like the actor that played King Arthur. He was the main villain in Mission Possible 5 and 6. As I must always do whenever I get the chance, praise be to the almighty Joel Edgerton. Glorious! Joel Edgerton is fantastic in this movie. Long may he reign on my movie screens because bless the man that is Joel Edgerton. My only complaint is I wish there was more of Joel Edgerton. Glorious! His character, I feel like, if you are familiar with the legend of Sir Gawain, you might feel a little short change with his character, and that's all I feel comfortable saying. If if you do see this movie, I think it'd be it would behoove you to go back and either find or listen to the original story because for the most part it does adapt it pretty well, but the ending kind of leaves it up for your interpretation which can either be a really good thing or a bad thing. I think some people might actually be turned off by this ending. I, I was much more okay with it once I understood and saw which route they're going for. There was a part in the movie, I won't say what happens, but it did almost lose me until I realized what angle they were going for with it. I'm going, okay, I'm more on board with this. By and large, it follows pretty true to the story. It's just that ending of 
how are you going to interpret it? Which I expect nothing more from, nothing less from A24 at this point, because that's just kind of what they do. It sure will divide some people, I'm sure, at least from the ending. But the, all the performances are fantastic. Dev Patel, the Sea of Candor, Joel Edgerton. Glorious. Another major positive is the cinematography. Like the landscapes and the aesthetics are gorgeous from the green chapel having its own very specific vibe and color palette to his journey. You can tell where he's at in his story from the color palette and the visuals around him. You could just feel the weight bearing down on him as he keeps going on. However, I don't know if I love this movie as much as a lot of other people seem to be loving it. I think it's good but again like i said at the beginning of this review i'm still kind of coming to grips with my own thoughts on this a lot of people are raving about how excellent it is and how like it kind of subverts the expectations of a epic knight's quest and to a certain extent i agree whereas other parts i do feel this movie even though it's only two hours does drag at certain points and there are certain points that i'm just going i feel like this is being artsy for the sake of being artsy and I know some people will be like, well, you're just missing the point of that scene. Maybe I am, in which case I'd love to be educated. But I think at times in this, it goes for style over substance. Well, whereas other times, the substance is really, really great. Like certain scenes where just two characters are talking to each other are fantastic. There's a fantastic scene before the Green Knight even shows up between King Arthur and Gawain. That was a fantastic scene, basically like about family to a certain extent and honor I really really enjoyed that but there's times that I just I don't want to say I was checking my clock but I felt like it and yeah it wasn't to the level that I was expecting it wasn't a, it's not a bad movie at all if it, it's a very competently and well-made film I just don't know if it's going to be for everyone if that makes sense but then again you could say that with almost any a24 movie i love the lighthouse it ain't gonna be for everybody i'm still kind of coming to grips with this movie i think there's a lot of positives the cast are fantastic dev patel is going to be a huge star one day and he's asked to do so much in this movie and i don't think he drops the ball a single time you like him when you need to like him there are times you are going to hate him and i think that's the point he's a very complex character and I think Dev Patel absolutely knocks it out of the park. Joel Edgerton, in the very limited role that he has, the world needs more Joel Edgerton. Stop it. Get some help. It's just, I think the pacing was a little wonky and it was slow at times, but maybe this is more of your cup of tea of a very different type of adventure story that you may have your own interpretation of the ending, and that's fantastic. I... I liked the ending for the most part once I saw what they were doing, but as a whole, I'm going to need to marinate on this movie a little bit more because I still have a lot to process. And I guess that's a good thing when movies make you think. Well, what did you guys think about this movie? Did you really, really like it? Are you kind of one of those people that's really buying into the hype? Or are you kind of like me where you're still kind of processing how you feel about it? Or do you just straight up not like it? I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on this one. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of opinions. Let me know in the comments below. I always, always like hearing from you guys. And as always, if you want to subscribe, we're very, very close to 500. So subscribe, please. We're almost there. Uh, and if you like what you hear and you want to hear more, we've also got the Uncharted Media Podcast, which you can find on any one of the podcasting services, whether it's iTunes, Google Podcasts, um, etc. So yeah, subscribe there, and as always, stay sharp, movie guys and gals.